doing, saying, and thinking things that build trust is the greatest thing. But you have to remember that trust is culturally mediated. So I come back to the question of my Kenyan friend who comes an hour late for dinner. Will I trust him the next time? As an American, if I'm thinking that he needs to act like me, I won't. But if I'm asking myself, why did he come late to me? What did he mean by that? And perhaps instead of asking him directly, I started asking other people, Kenyans that I know, or people that have lived a long time in Kenya, what did he mean by that? And if I find wise and experienced friends, oh, he must mean he's really your friend. Then I can get past my initial mistrust of him. And when he invites me for dinner at his house, instead of thinking to myself, I'll come right when he tells me to come, instead I follow his pattern. And so he can begin to trust me as well too. This is, this is the, the, the challenge of intercultural teams because each of us has different sets of patterns and learning about those patterns and, and sometimes working through exercises as a team is very helpful. Talking about time, talking about what it means to be polite, talking about relationships. In many Asian societies, they're built on Confucian values, and it doesn't matter whether they're Christian or whether they're Buddhist or Taoist. Um, even those in those settings, uh, Muslims in China, still have this Confucian value system that gives you five sets of relationships and how each relationship must be handled appropriately. Now, they don't think theologically about that. It's so deeply inbuilt that they don't worry about that theologically. They're not looking for Bible verses to prove anything. And they might even say, I'm not Confucian, but the reality is these are cornerstones of China, of Korea, of Japan, Confucian-based societies, which don't necessarily follow that as a religion, but they follow the social structure. And that understanding that for the rest of the teammates can be very important. The Japanese talk about reading the air. And so what they want to do at a meeting is they don't necessarily listen to the words. They want to hear the tone of voice. They want to see what the eye contact is. They want to see how people are sitting. Are, are, are they seated back like this? Are they leaning forward? Are they making direct eye contact, which for the Japanese can be quite aggressive? Are they looking down respectfully? Are they crossing the eyes and then looking to the side of the face? They will look for all these things. One of the ways this comes out is how Japanese take portraits. So they ask an American to take a portrait of, of me. And the American portrait would be framed just as this camera shot is, roughly around the head. And for them, that's perfectly fine. The Japanese want to see the entire context that surrounds me. Because for them, they can't know me apart from what all the rest of it shows. They want to see the room I'm in. They want to see what the furniture is like. They want to see how it's arranged. So being able to work on building trust takes a lot more than just thinking as an American for me, what does it mean to get them to trust me? I have to show them that I understand who they are. Then we can begin to trust each other. And there are a lot more things I could say, but I think that's the really crucial piece, and I'll just leave it at that.